it's Lori Ingham, your Franklin Anime Examiner here. Um, first of all, to address the noises going on in the background, my son's playing a game. So, um, <clears throat> he's playing a little game, so uh, that's what you're going to hear in the background, probably throughout this video. Um, the second thing is that if you've ever seen any of my other, uh, the other brief vlogs that I've done, um, you might notice already that I've lost a little bit of weight. Oh, uh, actually, I lost about 40 pounds. <laughs> um, so I'm a little skinnier and I'm still working that way, so um, so you probably notice my face a little bit. And if I were to stand up, you notice my pants were a little saggier than usual. So um, now I'm on the weight loss track, so next day if you see me at AAC, I will be thinner um, than I have been in the past. Okay, so those two things out of the way. Um, first, um, I actually want to focus on a... Um, well, this, to this time around, I decided to do some recaps and um, on the on the examiner.com. If you go to my examiner.com site, you notice I've been doing uh, two recaps of two shows, uh, recaps of two shows the past couple weeks on uh, two series that are coming that are being uh, being released. Uh, one of them is on the show um, Brothers Conflict, which is what we're going to talk about mostly about today, and um, the other one is on uh, Danganronpa. Of the animation which is based on a video game of the same name um, my focus today is going to be on uh, Brothers Conflict and other uh, harem type animes um, now when I decided to review Brothers Conflict um, I thought maybe we might get a, um, a decent harem anime um, similar, maybe possibly along the same veins as uh, other ones, because the, the premise of it seemed kind of a little silly to me anyway. Because um, it it the premise seemed to, well, if you're not familiar with it, uh, Brothers, Brothers Conflict is about this girl named Emma, and she has this pet squirrel named Julie that she can talk to, and her father's getting remarried, her father's gotten remarried to a woman who has 13 sons. Uh, and of course, she when they when her father and her uh, new stepmother um, go off on their honeymoon and uh, and she wants to she and she wants to give them their alone time she goes and lives with the thirteen brothers thirteen new brothers and of course like any anime like oh like any harem anime I should say um, the thirteen brothers are all handsome boys. <laughs> um, Probably the exception only being uh, the youngest character who's ten, um, but uh, is absolutely obviously that's absolutely in love with his older sister, calling her Oni, Oni Chan all the time. Um, and then you have the other brothers, um, to where of which most of them are older. Um, probably the only exceptions are uh, one brother who's actually in her grade and actually had a crush on her before her parents, their parents got married. Um, another young and another younger brother who is um, other than the youngest uh, whose name is Wataru. Uh and then another younger brother who's a um, who's actually an I who's like a idol um, who's a singing idol and um, but the other but the other brothers around between 18 20 18 uh, 30 something and so most of these brothers are a lot older than she or older than she is and she's about 16. Um, now when I started to watch uh, Brothers Conflict I thought the premise would be silly enough that um, I thought the premise would be silly enough that they might actually kind of make fun of it a little bit um, make fun of the concept of the harem animes and in the fact and also the fact that this particular anime also plays into another type of um, shoujo style uh, anime in that you have the forbidden um, but not really forbidden because they're not really related um, other than marriage um, the forbidden incest type thing of which most of the animes you see out there, they kind of deal with it, but not really by making them, oh, they're not really siblings. Um, the same case here. It's uh, reverse harem with a uh, girl who's now living with her, uh, I should say, 11 brothers, or 11 brothers, because two of them live outside of the house. Um, 
with her new brothers and um, and it's just her and them and the parents are not around so you could imagine it's most things forbidden forbidden love imagine the hijinks type thing um, my feeling on this particular um, and uh, my feelings on this particular one are kind of mixed um, the characters are amusing enough um, it was almost like they decided to throw in like every single because the fact they figured if they got 13 13 boys here they're gonna throw in every single profession they could possibly think of that these boys might be involved with to make them more successful and more attractive as it were um, you got the oldest who's a doctor you've got um, the next one who's a you know, one who's a doctor one who's a lawyer uh, one who runs a video game company, um, two of the brother, two of the brothers are voice actors, um, and throwing it in there too, three of the brothers are triplets, which, which you have a set of identical ones, and then the third one, uh, who's from a different egg, um, who's fraternal to them, um, you've got, um, who else? You've got one brother who's a monk, although he doesn't act like it. Uh, one who's um, one's a hairdresser, one's a writer, he's a cross dresser. So um, I don't know how he's going to eventually fit into all of this. Um, like I said, and you guys, like I said, you already have one that's an idol, one that's in school with her, and uh, one that's um, and the youngest one. Um, and I, I, I can't, and I, oh, I couldn't think of what, what some of the other professions are. Oh, one of them's a basketball, one of them's a college basketball player, uh, and. I can't think of what the what uh, one of them is. I'm thinking of Iori. I can't think of what his profession is at the point. Although I want to say florist, but that doesn't sound right. But um, be all the, but of course you gotta have the different brothers with the different personalities and the different interests and and all this and um, and my feelings. I was hoping when I first started watching it that it kind of make fun of the whole aspects of brother about the uh, harem animes and the um harem animes and these uh incest but not really type stories and uh, uh kind of plays it pretty straight i mean the character the main character emma is um after after watching the most recent episode I'm, I'm definitely sure that she's a mary sue type character um she's just kind of put into the story because they need they just need a character for these other ones to play off of and fall in love with and express their feelings for and even maybe tease a little bit um and uh she's definitely a mary sue she's put in there so that the audience can identify with her she's kind of like um what do you call it uh she's kind of like the uh, bella character in twilight except probably uh, although i don't think bella had a talking squirrel um which we'll get to in a minute um the uh character the um she has like no it seems like she has like no personality of her own um her defining trait is that she was a she was an only child her pair but her father was always gone because he was uh he was an adventurer and um because of that she was always by herself so when she when he got married she was actually happy about it because now she was going to have a family and uh turns out the whole familial obviously the whole familiar thing is going to be a little complicated um uh but she really has no real personality of her own really um no real traits that really kind of stand out which is kind of common in these harem animes and that they kind of I feel like I feel like in these animes it kind of create a uh, a main character for all the other characters to fall in love with. They create them as a blank slate, blank slate, so that you so that you as the audience can identify, can put yourself in their place. That was the that was why Bella in Twilight she was written with no personality traits of her own, with no description of her own, so that the right reader can insert themselves into the story. And that's how I feel about, um, and that's how I feel about uh, most harem animes. That they mostly do that. Uh, probably the few exceptions I can think of are um, are um, Iori Aoshi, who which um, which eventually becomes a harem anime, but the lead character. Um, right from the beginning, he only has that one love. He only has the one love throughout the entire thing, and all the other girls fall in love with him. But um, he's all, he's committed to one love. He just can't tell it. He he's only committed to the one girl. He just can't tell anybody. Um, 
And he also has his own interesting backstory in that his mother, um, if I remember correctly, um, somebody might want to correct me in the comments, uh, his character um, started out um, in a family of, uh, I want to say, uh, Yakuza doesn't sound right, but some, I think like some big business family and of which his mother was kicked out and he started, he was raised in this atmosphere and was told to forget about his mother and obviously he couldn't so uh he left he eventually left and uh abandoned the idea of even uh taking up this uh company at the end of the story um and uh and when he left she he was promised to this girl and uh they ended up falling in love and and all this and the whole story is really about the two of them getting to know each other while in the meantime they have other characters who who because they can't say they can't say that they're engaged that um, fall in love with them also and that's actually that's Ayori Aoshi is good um, in that sense because it's an it's a harem anime but the char but the lead character has a personality he has an interesting backstory he has um, he has his own interests and faults um, uh, he has he has his own he's his own person. Um, and because of the fact that he happens to be a nice guy is the reason why all these girls end up falling in love with him. And you can see why he's a nice guy. Um, another one I could think of um, is Orin High School Host Club. Um, some people some people are like she doesn't really, the, the lead character there, uh, Haru, he doesn't really have a personality. But she does. She Her thing is that she, um, is the fact that she's, she's very gender neutral in her attitude. Um, because right from the beginning she states that she doesn't care how people see her. If see people see her as a guy or people see her as a girl, she doesn't care either way. Um, so a lot of the jokes in the show kind of revolve around the fact that uh, the that um, the lead uh, Tamaki, the uh, the leader of the host club, wants to see her in dresses all the time, even though part of the plot is that she can't be in dresses all the time because she has to be part of the host club. Um, so that I ends up being part of this reverse harem anime and you get and you discover why she's like that it's because because her father is a, her father is a crossdresser so she doesn't see gender as being anything anything either way um so so that's where you get that um but but as far as uh brothers conflict it, it kind of plays i mean i'm still gonna recap it i'm still gonna watch it uh, I'm in the hopes that something inter something a little more interesting happens. Um, probably my favorite character is not even one of the brothers at all. It's the character of the squirrel Julie, um, who is uh, Emma's pet, and she is the only one who can talk to it. She's the only one that understands what he's saying. Everybody else hears the ch 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 chatter of the squirrel. Uh, she's the only one that actually can hear him talk. Um, and then you discover in, I want to say, episode three, that uh, Lewis can also, her other brother, one of her other brothers, Lewis, can also hear him talk, um, can also understand him, and makes a promise to Julie that he'll protect her uh, from the other brothers. So, um, so that is, uh, Julie is probably one of the funnier characters in the show, is probably one of the best characters in the show because of his, uh, because he's just funny he's uh he's always trying he's always attacking the brothers when they get too close to her um like in the current episode um the the brother yukio is trying to teach um is trying to teach um uh what do you call it they're trying to teach emma how to cut me and to help her guide her he gets behind her like in the typical romantic get behind her and show her how to do it and touch her and all kind of thing touch her hands and they get caught by the uh, cross-dressing brother um of which he accuses her of he accuses uh yukio of wanting to get close to her and all that and he's like he's like no i'm not trying to do that and all that and uh and all of a sudden julie just comes out of nowhere and attacks his face and starts attacking him and uh because she's because he's very protective um i just thought that was that was funny um and um but i with, with brothers conflict i'm hoping that it ends up more than that right now in the first four episodes uh not really it's it's uh, typical 
typical, 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 typical um, harem anime. Um, typical of the forbidden romance type anime. Um, but not really forbidden romance. And um, I may give a video response on my th thoughts on Danganronpa. Although I'm, I'll, that'll stay for another one. But um, that's my th thoughts. Okay. See you on the flip side. Oh, I will see you at AO. Oh, another thing. Um, before I forget, I will be at AAC this year. I'm going to be there Saturday and Sunday. Um, I may be doing a panel. I don't know yet. So I will. So if you see me, say hi. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be cosplaying yet. I will. Um, I'm going to see how long my hair gets um, because I may end up going as uh, Tsukimi from Je Princess Jellyfish again. So um, I'm going to see how long my hair gets and. Um, I will see you then.